generally considered to be the shortest war ever in history, the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896, was fought between the factions of the British Empire and the Zanzibar Sultanate of Khalid bin Bargash. Lasting only 38 minutes, the battle comprised a bombardment of the Zanzibar capital of Stone Town by the Royal Navy, which easily routed the Zanzibar forces defending from the Sultan's harem and the Royal Yacht anchored in the harbour. The prelude to the Anglo-Zanzibar War begins with the signing of the Heligoland Zanzibar Treaty between Britain and Germany in 1890, a treaty which was, in effect, a drawing up of the spheres of influence being held between the main imperial powers of East Africa leaving the island of Zanzibar to the control of the British Empire, while the German Empire was given rule over the mainland colonies of Burundi, Rwanda and Tanzania to form German East Africa, this period being known as the Scramble for Africa, as each of the European imperial powers sought to chop up the continent among themselves. With Zanzibar now under British rule, the island nation was declared a protectorate of the British Empire, and thus the puppet sultan of Hamad bin Thuwaini was installed in 1893 due to his strong support of British rule in the East African region. Sultan Khalid Hamad ruling the protectorate in relative peace for a period of three years until his sudden death on August 25, 1896, the cause of his passing having not fully been determined, though rumours suggested that his cousin, Khalid bin Bargash, had him poisoned, a theory compounded by the fact that Khalid had already assumed the position of sultan and moved into the palace within hours of his predecessor's death, all of which was done without British approval. The rapid change in power resulted in severe consternation among British diplomats, with acting Consul General of British East Africa, Basil Cave, declaring that Khalid should stand down from the position of Sultan, a warning he subsequently ignored, all while he began moving his forces into Stone Town and the palace, the Sultanate factions being surprisingly well armed, with weapons and cannons provided as diplomatic gifts to the previous Sultan from the British. Khalid, by the end of August 25th, having secured his palace with 3,000 men, multiple field guns, and the modestly armed royal yacht, HHS or His Highness's ship Glasgow, which was a product of the William Denian Brothers shipyard of Dumbarton in Scotland. As the Sultan moved to fortify his position in Stone Town, the British moved rapidly to ensure that they had a suitable force to combat him, with two warships already present in the harbour, HMS Philomel and HMS Thrush, which sent troops ashore to secure the British consulate and to keep the local population from rioting, while Cave also requested assistance from the nearby HMS Sparrow, which entered Stone Town Harbour on the evening of the same day. Cave, therefore, was left in a strong position in terms of men and weaponry, but had not the authority to open hostilities without receiving express approval from the British government. Thus, to prepare for the possibility of conflict, he issued a telegram to the Foreign Office on the evening of the 25th, stating that, in the event of all peaceful solutions failing, would the British forces in Stone Town Harbour have permission to fire upon the palace, Cave sending continued ultimatums to Khalid as Parliament debated their potential options, all of the warnings issued by Cave being ignored by the new Sultan. On the morning of August 26th, HMS Raccoon and HMS St George also entered Stone Town Harbour, the St George being the flagship of the Cape and West Africa station at Simonstown in the Cape Colony, under the command of Rear Admiral Harry Rawson, the arrival of the Raccoon and the St. George, coming alongside the receipt of a telegram response from London, declaring that Cave was authorised to do whatever was necessary to resolve the situation with the support of Her Majesty's government. Thus, on the morning of August 26th, Cave issued one final ultimatum to Khalid, demanding that he leave the palace by 9 o'clock on the morning of August 27th, while at the same time ordering that all non-military vessels in Stone Town Harbour leave at the first opportunity as both factions prepared for war. The next morning, an hour before the deadline, Khalid provided a response to the ultimatum, stating that he would not take down his colours, and that he did not believe that the British would fire upon his palace, Cave replying by stating most emphatically that unless Khalid vacated the palace, the British forces in the harbour would do as warned when the deadline expired. Thus, at 9am on August 27, 1896, orders were given for the British vessels in the harbour to commence their bombardment of the Sultan's palace. The sheer magnitude of the Royal Navy's firepower, seeing a majority of Khalid's main artillery guns knocked out within the first two minutes of fighting. As the palace grounds comprised mostly wooden structures, these did little to protect the defenders from incoming British fire, and thus the 3,000 men of the Sultan's forces could do nothing to fight off the bombardment. Khalid, shortly after his artillery had been destroyed, escaping the palace through a back exit, leaving his servants and warriors to defend the palace alone and leaderless. Out in the harbour, the only vessel of the Sultan's fleet, HHS Glasgow, had no chance of surviving the British onslaught, and after taking several volleys of 9.2-inch rounds from the flagship HMS St George, 
The Glasgow was holed below the waterline and began to sink almost immediately after hostilities began. The crew of the Glasgow raising the British flag as a sign of surrender, and all aboard were subsequently rescued by the Royal Navy. The Glasgow eventually settling on the harbour bed, with its masts and funnels projecting from the water, at 10.45 a.m. At 0940, seeing the hopelessness of their situation, and with their leader having abandoned them, the Sultan's flag was struck, and the Anglo-Zanzibar War, the shortest war ever recorded in history, ended after 38 minutes of constant shelling by the Royal Navy. The casualties of this fleeting conflict being one petty officer severely wounded aboard HMS Thrush, against the losses of the Sultanate forces, which included approximately 500 men and women being killed, both civilians and fighters, four artillery pieces destroyed, one shore battery destroyed, the royal yacht HHS Glasgow sunk, and two other vessels also being destroyed. Having escaped the bombardment of his palace, Khalid and a small group of followers sought sanctuary at the German consulate in Stonetown, where, despite multiple demands for his surrender being sent by the British to the German government, he would be held until eventually being smuggled off the island by German forces on October 2, 1896, after which he was exiled to Dar es Salaam in the mainland Tanzania, being lodged in a grand house in the town until German East Africa was captured by British forces in 1917, Khalid subsequently being exiled again to St. Helena in the Atlantic, the same island onto which the French Emperor Napoleon was exiled, and later the Seychelles, finally returning to East Africa after several entreaties to the British government requesting his return. Winston Churchill, as Secretary of State to the Colonies, ultimately agreeing on March 22, 1922, after which Khalid settled in Mombasa in the Kenya colony, where he died in 1927. Subsequent to the battle, Basil Cave and Lloyd Matthews, British consul to Zanzibar, would receive widespread commendation for their parts in the 38-minute Anglo-Zanzibar War, with Cave being made a companion of the Order of the Bath and soon promoted to consul general in full while Sultan Hamoud appointed Matthews to Zanzibar's Grand Order of Hamundaya, and went on to become the nation's first minister and treasurer, using his influence as an abolitionist to end slavery on the island nation. Zanzibar would exist as a British protectorate in peace until 1963, when during the retreat of the British Empire during the 1950s and 60s, the island nation was quietly given its independence, followed in 1964 by a bloody uprising by the majority black population that deposed the Arab ruling classes the last sultan, Jamshid bin Abdullah, fleeing into exile in Oman, the newly established People's Republic of Zanzibar, rapidly working to merge with the former British and German colony of mainland Tanganyika to thus form the modern nation of Tanzania. In summary, the Anglo-Zanzibar War was essentially the finest example of the famous British gunboat diplomacy, where one man's unchecked ambition faced off against the might of an empire that was unwilling to sacrifice its colonialist entitlement the outcomes of this brief conflict changing the face of Zanzibar forever, as it directly brought about the end of slavery on the island, but would also see the country fall well and truly into the power of the British Empire, as puppet leaders were positioned to rule on their behalf, the Anglo-Zanzibar War being brief and bloody, but would have lasting effects over the island's people that would span the next half-century.